Hello everyone, welcome to Global Government News. Today is Monday, August 29th, 2011, and I am Darko. Uh, my website is ggnonline.com, that's ggnonline.com. You can also uh, visit me on YouTube. Uh, my channel is ddarko2012, that's ddarko2012. Also, um, you can follow me or just join the group on Facebook, the Global Government News group, um, with the links and all the links for all the articles that I cover in the YouTube's video description. So check those headlines and links out. Also, you can network uh, blog uh, on eBlogger down here by clicking on that. Um, I have uh, also you can uh, track me on Blogger right here to the right there if you have a Blogger account and uh, just lately. Uh, by changing my Firefox to an older Firefox version, I'm able to see my polls again, so uh, I'm able to read it. Uh, it says, what type of false flag government-sponsored event is most likely in the next 18 months? It says, another financial crisis, a domestic terror attack, manufactured viruses released by a laboratory, a staged alien invasion using blue bean technology, uh, or none of the above. Now, two of the things I wish I would have put up here um, is just basically... Uh, you know, weather modification weapons. Uh, also, uh, you know, like this hurricane, I should have put that up there, but I didn't. And um, also, um, all of the above. Someone wanted that too. But either way, the results are so far the majority of the people voting, 38%, uh, are saying a domestic terror attack, of course, would be blamed on domestic uh, militias and lone wolf terrorists. Um, okay, and then the next one is 29%, and that's another financial crisis, followed by 14% is a manufactured root, uh, virus, which uh, if we'll cover that later, but uh, actually there's been a new mutated strain of bird flu and uh, H1N1 that's been unleashed. So, okay, so for new uh, listeners, I usually start with, out with the economy in the first video. The second video, I uh, go into uh, the war of terror, um, basically the police state and that. Uh, just crazy stuff for the federal government, and the government itself is cracking down on individuals and freedom. Uh, the third video is usually eugenics and uh, science and any other odd news that I get to. Um, so um, I might cover some other news in this first video because I don't have a lot of economic news. So either way, Dow surges 254, nearing break-even point for a year. It says here stocks rallied in some of the thinnest trading of the summer, highlighted by gains for insurers amid relief over Hurricane uh, Irene's relatively light touch on major cities. Then we have uh, stocks for China fall 1.3% on talk of new bank tightening move in the dollar. Dollar climbs versus yen and franc on U.S. economic data. Then moving on to commodities. Uh, right now, it's kind of mixed numbers. Um, we have Brent crude at $101. It was up $0.52. Cents. Gas oil futures up $13. Heating oil futures uh, not really changing much. Natural gas, same. Uh, get, uh, and then we're going to move down here to agriculture. Um, most, A lot of them were up. A uh, big one was cocoa was up $60. Coffee was up 5 and corn was up 3 Wheat was up 7 and soybean up 35 And it was, we moved down to metals here. We have copper at $412. It was up $1.35. Uh, gold was up about $0.40. Cents. It's $1,792. Silver at $40 and it was up about $0.28. Cents. Okay, and then we have gun sales on the rise in July alone. 21,000 guns were sold in Alabama. Uh, it says here, to put that number in perspective, four years ago, Alabama gun sales hit just over 14,000. Since 2008, gun sales have steadily climbed each year. So go in there and check that out. And, of course, that's because of the economic decline and people who are aware of what's going on. What happens when the economy declines and people don't have jobs for a sustained period of time? Uh, what happens? So... Kind of like that uh, uh, naive CNN uh, reporter uh, going in that Texas gun shop uh, saying, well, if the economy's getting bad, why would you want uh, 50 guns? Why would you want uh, to uh, have guns if the economy's getting bad, like she didn't know or something? Um, it says here, UK arms sales to despots enjoy rise. So Britain has increased about 30% of its weapons uh, exports to the Middle East and North African we have drought high demand makes hay hard to find. Uh, scorching drought in the southern plains has caused hay prices to soar, benefiting farmers to the north, but forcing many ranchers to make a difficult choice between paying high prices or selling off their cattle. 
We have consumer spending data, uh, allies recession worries as consumer spending rose at its fastest pace in five months in July, a further sign the economy is not falling back into recession, which is a bunch of crap. Although manufacturing activity in Texas almost stalled this month, so it went up 0.8% on strong demand for motor vehicles as Japan related supply restraints and uh, that was of course what economic warfare created by what weather warfare and uh, China widens reserve ratio to limit inflation analysis say China broadened the base of reserves it requires commercial lenders to uh, deposit with the central bank to control liquidity and limit inflation economists said and um, you know of course the central banks here in the United States I wish we didn't have them but if we did have them it would be nice if they actually did have some kind of reserves or lower the reserve uh, ratio. It says here, pending sales of previously owned U.S. homes declined more than estimated. Number of contracts to purchase previously owned U.S. homes fell in July for the first time in three months. A sign that lower prices and borrowing costs aren't luring in buyers. And then we have a study that shows powerful corporations really do control the world's finances. This is from SciOrg.com. For many years, conventional wisdom has said that the whole world is controlled by uh, the moneyed uh, elite or more recently by the huge multinational corporations that seem to sometimes control the very air we breathe. Now, the new research by a team based in Zurich, Switzerland has shown that what we've suspected all along is apparently true. The team has uploaded the result onto the preprint server. So you can go in there and uh, check that out. And that is right because um, a lot of these uh, individuals like Warren Buffett uh, right here um, they carry this money and they're kind of like the uh, um, financial planners or uh, wealth management for the elites, elites, um, the movers and the shakers. And the corporations are also these kind of like shell companies for them. They're actually, you know, because a corporation, they have corporation status, you know, basically limited liability and all that. Um, they're basically arms of the government. Um, and if you look at it that way, then you could see that we actually are quite communist in the United States. So these corporations are basically little government entities, and it's uh, they're they're just like little um, uh, little uh, safe havens and, and little um, uh, entities in which money can be transferred for the elite. So they don't really have like all these stacks of reserves of gold, and I'm sure they do. But what I'm saying is, is that wealth now, uh, as far as the elites and the powers that be, they kind of just uh, uh, keep it moving and flowing through all these uh, uh, corporations. They call them. And then they just transfer them. And so that's why you have people like Warren Buffett here. Bank of America stake reads 1.3 billion paper profit on one day. He's earned 1.3 billion one day on his 5 billion investment in Bank of America. So he kind of bailed him out, right? And then what happened? He's going to come around. He's going to buy something else out. So he's, he's really just kind of working for them. And he gets paid for doing it. Compensated well. Disney factory uh, faces probe into sweatshop suicide claims. Human rights campaigners say Chinese factories using children as young as 14 and that workers forced to do overtime. So, uh, also, you can go in there and check that out. Links will be posted. Long awaited WikiLeaks secret Bank of America files have been destroyed, it says. And uh, it says here that Bank of America may have just dodged a bullet when it comes to the stash of confidential information that it said last year. This would be in the hands of WikiLeaks after an internal feud. A breakaway member of WikiLeaks has told Spiegel Online that it's destroyed information that he took from the organization. And WikiLeaks itself says uh, that includes five gigabytes of information from Bank of America. Then we move on to the next article. Act now to save global recovery, says IMF chief. He says, uh, new head of IMF on Saturday called on global policymakers to pursue urgent action, including forcing European banks to bulk up their capital uh, to prevent a descent into a renewed wor world recession. So there you go. They keep talking about uh, a recovery, like there's actual recovery happening right now, and that uh, we haven't uh, got out of a recession. Uh, to begin with. So it says here, uh, Euro bailout in doubt as hysteria sweeps uh, Germany. It says here that the, if the court rules that the 440 uh, billion euro rescue fund breaches treaty law or undermines German fiscal sovereignty at risk, setting off an instant brush fire across monetary union. And it talks about constitutional court rules on the legality of the EU's bailout machinery. And we have the uh, Greek banks to merge two of the Greek, Greek's uh, largest lenders, Alpha Bank SA and EFG Eurobank. It says here they confirm plans to combine in a deal that would create the country's largest bank. So good for competition, great for consolidation. Taxpayers strike back. It says residents overturn townships planned for a new $1.5 million office. 
And it says here that uh, in these tough economic times, the sight of angry taxpayers filling the auditorium of a suburban high school isn't unusual. But those that gathered in Chicago suburb earlier this month weren't facing off against impressive town officials and rare expression of direct democracy that involved a 100-year-old state law. All 200 people present uh, got to vote and resoundingly overturned the township's plan to build a $1.5 million civic office. So they said here that they directed an out-of-control government to listen to the people said the campaign leader. Then moving on, we have Obama's new economic advisor advocated value-added tax. So that's real nice, a European-style consumption tax that taxes every stage of production for a good or service, a policy generally called a value-added tax, or VAT, or VAT, Social Security disability on verge of insolvency, laid off workers, and aging baby boomers are flooding Social Security disability program with benefit claims, pushing a financially strapped system towards the brink of insolvency. And uh, it's not really what it goes for, like I said before. Um, but you can go on there and find that out. Let's just listen to it. Is it uh, uh, Ron Paul's brother, Wayne Paul or something like that, on the Federal Reserve System and how Social Security was there? Do you pay off the bankruptcy uh, from 1933? Uh, and it says here that uh, the slow dis disappearance of the American working man and uh, you can go in there and check that out. It says a smaller share of men have jobs today than at any time since World War II. We have among the critical category of prime working age men between 25 and 54, only 81% held jobs, a barely noticeable improvement from its low point last year and still, says here, well below the depths of the 1982-83 recession when employment among prime age men never dropped below 85%. To put those numbers in perspective, consider that in 1965, 95% of men in their prime working years had a job. And that's right, in those early 80s, that was a tough time. That's when a lot of divorce Forces have to happen. A lot of broken families were created. A lot of tough times. And um, moving on here, of course, because a lot of the steel industry was going under and uh, the farming was getting screwed and manufacturing jobs are going overseas already. It says here, jobs uh, stress taking a toll on North Americans has researched 34 pieces of evidence that prove that the middle class in America is rapidly shrinking. And we move down here. It says here that in 1980, 52% of all jobs in the U.S. were middle-income jobs. Today, only 42% of all jobs are middle-income. I can't go through all this, but I'll read a couple. Back in 1980, less than 30% of all jobs in the U.S. were low-income jobs. Today, more than 40% of all jobs in the U.S. are low-income. Only 63.5% of all men in the U.S. had a job last month. According to Bloomberg, that figure is just slightly above the December 2009 number of 63 these are the lowest numbers since 1948. And the wealthiest 1% of all Americans now control 40% of all the wealth in this country. The poorest 50% of all Americans now control just 2.5% of all the wealth in this country. And the wealthiest 1% of all Americans now own over 50% of all the stocks and bonds. And lastly, uh, according to the Washington the average yearly income of the bottom 90% of all U.S. income earners is just $31,244. And, of course, you're going to have 10000 of that go to uh, the federal and state government. So you're left with about $20,000. You know, you add in uh, how the currency has lost its value over the past uh, 40 years, and, and really you're, it's not much, man. It is not much. If you go like 20, 30 years back, that's like making about $10,000 a year um, after taxes. Give Karl Marx a chance to save the world economy. And uh, this is a nice little propaganda saying, uh, uh, you know, how he was right about the uh, the bad things, the negative things of capitalism. But, but like Hitler said, uh, you know, capitalism and communism are two sides of the same coin. So, you know, both were created by the banks and setting up central banks is key and um, so we kind of have a mixed system of that and it just depends on what side of the pond you're on um, they tend to lean uh, towards the other but uh, it's all an illusion uh, basically we have u.s will never default vice president biden tells china so uh, you know how does he know that i don't know it says here, Britain to cut school bus services. And it says here, the uh, Derbyshire County Council has decided to cut school bus services across the county, causing great concern among parents and a local MP. And it's crazy because uh, out here in, uh, in the Midwest, in Chicago, they're actually cutting 
um, free um, bus fare and transportation for the elderly. So they're also cutting, uh, shutting down post offices in uh, you know, poor neighborhoods. So they're having a tough time as well, the elderly. It says here, Italian mayors protest government cuts, and then we have Indiana vouchers prompt thousands to change uh, from public schools to private schools. Why? Because they're better. This is GGN, and I'm Darko. Thank you.